Inmates, how is life behind bars? Not these bars, but these bars. In my last video, I had a subscriber actually send me a message about how strange it is where every time he hears me asking about inmates and how life is behind bars because he actually rides his BMW R1250 GS, I think he said it was an HP. Pretty sure it was a GSHP and he rides it to his work every day, which is actually at a prison, so he's actually working with inmates, genuine inmates behind these bars every day. So I can kind of see the irony there, but thanks for the message. So do you remember the video that I did over a year ago showing you how to strip the R1250 GSA down screw by screw? Where it turned out, I was kind of hoping for most of you just to basically think of it in reverse to put it back together again. But it's been a few of you who have messaged me saying, I've got it all in bits. How do I put it all back together again? So that's what this video is. I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to put it back together again. So last night, I quickly stripped this customer's R1250 GSA rally, HP rally down. So he's having a D7 bundle. He's having a K3 fitted. So I'm going to quickly get that on now show you it with all the harnesses laid out so it's all nice and neat and tidy and then we're going to put it back together screw by screw stay tuned okay i've got all the gear on and if those of you who are really paying attention you'll notice that it's a different day only because i got tied up with other things here in the office but i got all of this finished yesterday and now i'm going to put it back together again so you can see exactly how we do that now you'll notice he's had a d7 bundle with a k3 camera fitted we put a dual b6 on the back of the bike and we put a sound bomb up between the forks hopefully this customer is going to be very happy with the installation a little tip actually for some of you out there because we get a lot of questions from customers who say they've had the, their denali system set up on their bike for a while and all of a sudden they've come to their bike and the lights are flickering now there's a couple of things that this could be one of the main things to check would be modulation and when you go on to the can smile easy can software you'll see there's an option on your light pair for modulation. If this is turned on, well then you're gonna get a flickering. And a lot of people just turn everything on because they want all the funky features that the CanSmart and the EasyCan has to offer. So you just turn the modulation off and the flickering will stop. If they are still flickering, we'll then grab a can of WD-40. I use this, which is a special version of WD-40, which is basically a contact cleaner, but you can just use a good old conventional WD-40 and basically spray that into every single plug and connection that is between the easy can and the lights. And that will drive out any of this tiny micro condensation out of the plugs, which can cause flickering. Right, let's get this bike put back together again, screw by screw. Now, if you're anything like me and you just stick your screws straight into a can, straight into a lid or something, just so they're all in the right place, well then this is gonna be perfect for you because all your nuts and bolts are all mixed up and you have no idea where they're all gonna go. That's okay because we've now got this video to help you put your bike back together again. Now I have said in a previous video, if you're really worried about it, as you take your bike apart, we'll then put the screw back in the hole where you took it from. But if you haven't done that and you've got basically a whole tin of bolts and screws and you have no idea where they're gonna go, well then this is perfect for you. So the important thing is, so if you look at all my screws that I've got sat in the tray on the worktop over there, the important thing to note is there are only three main screws that you, you need to work with, but I'm gonna show you five. Now starting off with this big large one here. So this is the, the great big bolt that sits right at the front of the tank which holds the front tank fairing down, but it's, the, it's a, real, a really big one. It's the biggest one out of all the screws, not the bolts, the screws that holds the fairings together. And that's a T30. And we only have one of them in our collection of screws that you've taken off the bike. The next one in our little collection of screws, which you should only have two of these. You might have four of them if you've taken the rear tail off, but you've got two of these. This is also a T30. And it's a little stubby screw. It looks like all the other screws. It does look like all the other screws, but it's just a little bit thicker. So there's two of those and they go on the bridge just behind the fuel tank. And I'll show you those as I'm putting it back onto the, the bike. We then have this shoulderless. There's no shoulder on this and you'll see one with a shoulder shortly. We're going to refer to this 
as a long, shoulderless T25. Then we have another one here, which in the video we're going to refer to as a short, shoulderless T25. There's no shoulder on this at all. And then the final one, this is a short, shouldered T25. So let's start getting the bike back together again, and now you know exactly which screw to pick up when I say either a long shoulderless T25, a short shoulderless T25, a short shouldered T25, a stubby T30, and a long T30. Right, let's get going. So now we've got it all laid out, all the wiring harnesses in place, the easy cans in, the K5, sorry, the K3 is in, the cameras are all in. We're now going to start putting the bike back together again, and we're going to start off by putting the petrol tank back in place. So we're going to lift it up, and we're not going to push it all the way in yet because we need to plug the wires in. So I'm going to come around there and grab the camera again because I haven't got anyone here to help me and show you exactly what I'm doing. So all you do, you can just about see that, is we just push the fuel in place and it just clicks into place. Yeah, that is now on. You can't pull it off unless you press the white button back in again for it to pop off. The other two are polarized plugs, so you can't get them in the wrong, in the wrong way. One, two. So they are now back both on. And now we're going to put the tank back into place. Now, if you look underneath the, the actual adventure tank, you've got a scoop. You can't see it on my fingers, but you've got these rubber bungs on both sides. And as you slide the tank back down, the, the C-shaped scoop, which looks like this, literally goes over the top and bottom and sits into place beautifully. And it literally slides down. So you get, you get it central by your fingers in the back, Top, I've kind of pushed the top in at the top. I've kind of got that leaning forwards. And now we can literally just slide, slide that back and it will just sit into place. And they are now in place. I'm looking down these holes just here, making sure that they are lining up perfectly so we know that the tank is ready for it to be locked into place. And now we've got those lined up, we can now put our fork bridge back on. So if you remember in the last video from over a year ago, if you haven't watched already, we just when we unbolt this, we just leave it just like that. And you should be able to just, well, I sometimes like to plug that back in first so it doesn't get in the way. And then you push it down and slide that all down. And that is almost Almost in. So all, all I need to do now is tighten these up. Grabbing two of those short stubby T30 with shoulders on them, we've only got two of them. These go into the fork bridge just here. So when I've got the petrol tank off for a short while, I basically have a, a plastic bag with a, a, a towel in there just to block the hole up. Now I've left all the screws in for this but they're all the same size. Obviously you might have a tank ring. That's down to you to remember which screws are required for the tank ring but they are literally, they're, they're these ones here. They're, they're kind of, I've, I think they're classed as a socket bolt um, but they are all T25s. If a gasket underneath has come off, I can see it didn't. If the gas has come off, obviously make sure you push the gasket back on underneath so it's uh, making a good seal. So before we screw that in place, I'm just going to put the breather pipes back on and keep them inside the channels that are on top of the air box. That's the breather pipes back on. There's a little clip here which goes over that wire. That's the wire for the ignition.
Now if you want to, we can test this right now by turning it because it won't open right now. So before we start putting everything back together again, like I haven't even unplugged this, so it should work. I'm going to turn the bike on. Turn it back off again. Okay, and that all works fantastic. Might want to uh, note that the torque settings for this, I had them set on number eight on my on my power tool. It's not very tight at all on these. Okay, so focused on bringing a really good video to you. I completely forgot to put this back on before I, before I put the petrol tank on. So that is completely my fault. Now we could take the fuel tank back off again, slide it back, which is actually quite a quick thing to do or I think I can actually get this on with the fuel tank in place. Now, the reason I take this off is it just makes it so much easier when I'm routing all the wires through. By taking this off, it gives you clear access to all the framework just behind it. Okay, so that's back in place. Grab the screw, and the screw for this one, if you've took it, taken it off, you just put it on the side with everything else is this black torx one of a kind screw right so this panel here goes on first now do you remember when you took it apart you had this little black pin so this little black pin is part of the plastic rivet which is for down here so i've, I've got that part here i'm going to leave it actually in the in the panel itself because it makes it easier to put on. So I'm going to put this one on now. And the way we do this is you've got a little ledge just there and you've got a prong at the top just up here. So if we focus on getting that little ledge over this little metal fin just here to begin with. So get it in place, get that ledge over the metal fin, that's already in place. Now I'm going to get the pin in the top. As you look down on the top, you'll see that the, there's a rubber bung, because there's lots of holes on here, but the way you see the rubber bung, you push that into the rubber bung, making sure that that doesn't come out on the bottom right-hand side. You just push that in like that. That's now sitting there absolutely fine. Now it's like that. We're going to lock in the rivet at the bottom so we're gonna make sure that it goes through the, the hole that's down there. There's only one hole for it to go into. And then we're gonna push that plastic pin through the rivet. And that is now in place. And all we have to do is screw these three screws. And those three screws are the short shoulderless T25s. So I've got the short shoulderless T25s in my hand. I'm just checking that hasn't come away either there and the third one is just here just need to make sure yep that the hole is lined up there we go that is that panel on now I'm going to do the same the other side I'm not going to show that and on the other side as you can see I've just completed this And if you can just look inside there, you can just about see the black rivet just there, which is all. I haven't put the pin in yet. You can see the hole going right through to the side. So I'm just gonna put the pin in now. Now I'm really annoyed <laughs> because I completely forgot to fit the carpet under the fuel tank. So I'm, gonna, I'm going to quickly undo what I've just done. I'm not gonna talk you through it again. I'm not gonna redo everything again because I've just done everything. But I'm gonna quickly undo what I've just done and get it back to where it is now, but with the carpet in place. Enjoy the video. Okay, carpet's in place, now we're gonna slide it back on and put it all back together and I'll come back to you shortly.
Okay, we're back to where we were. Let's continue. So we're now gonna stick the nose section back on. So out of the two nose sections you've got, you've got a piece with the whole top bit coming across, the larger piece of the two. That goes on first. Now, when you look underneath here, so I'm looking on the underside of here, you should have a black bung there and a black bung there. If you want to put a bit of grease or just wet them with your fingers to, to help with the installation, that's fine. And those two rubber rings are going to go over the two prongs here on the front of the bike. So what we do is we start guiding this back over here, underneath the indicator, but I've got my thumb underneath here, holding onto the rubber ring, that rubber grommet I just showed you, and also this one here, and I've got the backs of my fingernails touching the, the, the prongs. So as I offer it up, I can now push it back so it sits right on top of it. So that's all I'm worried about right now. Let me show you a close-up of that. And then underneath, if you can just about see that, you can see it just there. So now that's in place at the front and making sure it doesn't come off again. So as you're fiddling around this side here, it could come off. So you've got to keep your eye on it the whole time. Now that's like that. As we're bringing this round, you've got the air intake for the, for the air box and you've got the side of the panel here and these two need to line up and you need to push a, th a screw through there. And the screw we're going to use is a short shouldered T25. Okay, so that is now locked in place. So that is going nowhere. So now we've got the other side to go on. So when we put this one on, what we have here, if I show you inside here, see that little shark fin there? It's literally like a shark fin, yeah? Just there. That shark fin has got to go into this little slot here on the front. That's the first port of call, making sure that lines up inside there. I've seen it so many times when people break that shark fin off where they've taken the bike apart themselves, put it back together again, it looks good, but they've broken that off because they haven't paid attention to getting that in there. It's the first thing you need to do. When it's all on, we're then going to put a screw just up inside here, which sits on top of this part here. So it brings these two together, locks them in. So let's get that on now. So I've got my finger on that shark fin. I'm feeling my way into the slot. This sounds so bad. <laughs> and then just like the other side, where we got the air intake, we need to let now line up the hole on the air intake to the, the screw thread on the panel using the same screw we used on the other side, which is a short shouldered T25. So double checking that's all okay. And that is all nicely in place. Now it's still moving at the front. But that's because we haven't locked that screw in under there, which again is a short shouldered T25. And that goes just there. Now moving on to the nose section to finish off the front. It's just two screws we need, but, and the two screws are two short shouldered T25s. Now, on here, you've got these two letterbox grooves, one each side. And on the front of here, just there, you've got the little shark fins to go inside these little slots. So that's what we're aiming for first. We get those lined up, they're pushed on, and then it just literally lifts up and it's, it's now home. And all we have to do is hold that with our hand. If you let go, it'll fall off. So you hold that with our hand and then start getting the screws in. Right, now this is probably the hardest one of all. So, which is good. It just means it's not gonna get any harder. Because this is like, have you heard of the program, The Krypton Factor? I grew up in the 80s, so it used to be a big program for me in the 80s, watching all these very brainy people uh, do all these challenges. And one of them was putting pieces together, which look, looked impossible to put together. So, the thing is, this piece here connects this piece up and this piece, it kind of like interconnects with all of it. it. Has taken me a lot of time to perfect it. So I think I've got probably the best way of doing it. So this is what I'm going to suggest you do. As you look at it, and we're working on the left side, the clutch side of the bike, 
you've got a contact point towards the back. So this part goes towards the back. And what we're going to do is we, we're going to loosely put this one in and it goes on top of the tank just there. So we're going to loosely put that one in place. Literally two or three turns so it can't come off. Oh, sorry, the other thing to mention is the three screws we're about to use are all long shoulderless T25s. So that's a long shoulderless T25. So as we come across, obviously this is still loose at the top. As we come across, you've got these prongs on the top section of the panel. And these prongs slide into little grooves on the underside of the blue panel just here. So that's going to be our focus to begin with, getting them into there. It's literally a bit of wiggling around. There we go, that is in. You know when it's in because when you try and lift this, you can feel this moving as well. It's not coming away from it, so you know it's in. So that those two prongs are already in. Now what we're going to do at the front, there's like a little lip. So we'll bring it closer for you. Right, I don't know if you can see it just there, but we've got like this little lip here, which has to flick underneath the blue panel just here. Because I've just lift brought that forward, it's starting to fall out on the right hand side. So I'm just gonna push that back in. So that's all in place. And then all I'm going to do is push this down and back up again. There we go. That is now in place. So I'm happy with that. And I can li almost literally let go. So that's all in place. Now we can start putting the screws in. That one's in. And then this one here. There we go. So that's still loose, but it's connected. Yep, the actual tongues are going through. That'll all stiffen up once we've got the top on and the wind deflectors on. So with this side, it's almost exactly the same. Well, it is exactly the same, really. It's just that we've got a hole out here, which is access to the radiator. To show you up close on this one, there's your two prongs there. And there is also a prong there, by the way, that just went in without even thinking about it. And there is the, the bit that goes underneath the top fairing panel, the top nose panel. We get one of the long shoulderless T25s ready. So I'm putting that in there, so it's holding that in place. Couple of turns with the thumb and finger. Remember, I'm aiming to get the prongs into the top fairing first. Now, I've missed it. I've actually missed that one on this, this occasion because I can see the, the gap there. So it's going for another go. And now it's in. That's definitely in. And then I've got the other prong here going into the side of the blue panel. That's it. So all three prongs, one, two, three, and the ledge, the little flicky ledge thing is under the top panel as well. So I can literally let go of that now and it should, should stay there. So we're gonna tighten this one up here first. And go into the front one. And with this one, we need to put the cover back on. And then we put the, the long T25 shoulderless screw in. There we are, I'm happy with that, that's great. So I've just jacked the bike up so we can easily see where the next three screws are going. So there's one down here, and there's one here, and there's one here. Let me show you those close up. All of these screws are T25 short shouldered. So short shouldered T25s. So we're about to put six in. So first one down here. On that side. Now you could just use a short stubby Torx driver to do the ones on the inside and just maybe cut the back of your hands occasionally. It's nowhere near as bad as KTMs though. You, 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 you come away with loads of scratches and scars. But with the, with the Beamer, I found this really cool tool. I'm gonna to see if I can source it uh, at trade cost so I can afford it to you guys. Cause it's not, it's not cheap. It's actually quite expensive cause it's got ball bearings. It's a, a very good quality bit of kit. But um, this is what I use.
holding the screw. It's, it's a shame that the BMW screws aren't a magnetic. So that's now on there. Hold that up. That is all of the front part done. Everything's screwed into place. I'm happy with that. Right, so now we're putting the crash bars back on. You don't have to remove the crash bars, by the way. Sometimes I just pivot them out, so I undo the top one, pivot them down, then lock them back into place again. For this demonstration today, I took them off. And the two bolts, I just kept them with the crash bar, so it's a short bolt and a long bolt, but they are they're the ones that came from it. Okay, so keeping that nice and loose. If it's too tight, you're going to struggle to line up the bolt in here. Just for the record, these bolts are T40s. And then tighten that one back on again. Notice I've had to pull the, the OEM pod forward so I can gain access to this, this bolt here. And now I can bring this back down again, plug in the OEM spot, put that back into the, the little um, cable cable tie router thing just there and then we can straighten these up when it's back down in position. Okay, so now we're going to put on the top piece here just to finish it all off. So when we put this in place, as it comes down on top, there's a few things we need to line up. So you'll, you'll notice on the underside of here, we've got a little lip there, and we've got a little lip on the other side as well. That has to go over this section here and this section here before it pushes down onto here. So we come over the top like this, get it nice and straight. I haven't pushed it down yet. I'm going to, because this is still loose over here because we haven't put the air, the air, um, what do you call them? The air, the air things, the air wings. We haven't put the air thingies on yet. So that is now underneath that ledge there. So that's, that's, in place, it's in the right place. It's not, it's not home yet, but it's in the right place. And the same this side, we're going to do that. So now I can feel that they are definitely in place. And this bit is underneath this part, but the lip is underneath as well, if that makes sense. But they're fully in place. Now it's like that, we can push down and push it on. We then check again to make sure that these are aligned that they are definitely in. So as I lift that, the, everything that's coming with it, this is coming with it too. Same with this side as well. If it doesn't work, we just put our fingers underneath here and pull it off again and have another go. But that is, that is perfectly in place now. So now we're gonna start putting the screws in. I'm gonna start by putting these two in here first. These are two short, shouldless T25s. The two back here are also two short shoulderless T25s, the same as what you just put there. There's now three more screws to put in at the front here. You've got the one in the middle, and then you've got the two at each side. So we're gonna put the two at each side in. They are two short shouldered T25s. And this sometimes requires a bit of lining up. You can't just put the screw straight in. You've got to, you've got to lift a little bit here, just so you can see the both the holes are aligned because you're basically putting two panels together. Remember that big bolt I told you about, the big T30, the only one that's like it on the bike? That goes right down here in the middle just behind the handlebar. If you've got bar back risers, this is impo almost impossible to get to, and you have to try and think outside the box how to 
get to it. When I take the wind deflectors, that was the word I was looking for, deflectors. When I take the wind deflectors off, I always make sure I keep the long T25s, they're shoulderless by the way, but the long T25s, I keep them intact with the washers. So just in case you're you are lost on yours and it will come apart because they can come apart quite easily, you can see how it's all put together just there. You basically have a black grommet and then you have this shouldered washer, bush if you like, that comes in from the back. You then push the screw through the top so the washer part is actually on the panel itself. You then come down. If you put everything together properly, these holes will be lined up perfectly. If you struggle a little bit, all you need to do is loosen this screw here at the front and the other screw the other side and that will give this panel a little bit of movement. But I did a great job putting it together and mine are all lined up. So the rear tray is going on, so all we need to make sure is that there's no wires trapped over the edges as it comes down. So that is all nice and clear. This is an extremely neat job, I must say so myself. And as it comes on, we're just going to lip over the back here and then bring it down. And as you're pushing down, you should be able to see the black framework literally pushing up against the plastic and nothing's getting in the way. That is all good. All these four pieces in my hand that have to go on, they're all different. At this point in time, I have no idea which one goes where. So literally just offer them in place. That is the right one for there because it fits perfectly. If I try and put it in any of the other ones, it won't fit. So that's just beginner's luck. Let's try this one here. That doesn't fit right. It, you can see it doesn't quite fit right. Put it there, it's perfect. Let's try this one. No, it won't even go in the first part. So that goes into that one there and that one goes into there. And they are a perfect fit. You then have the four bushes, spacers, whatever you want to call them. These four things here. The tall ones go at the front and the short ones go at the back. Now, if you weren't putting the GS Adventure pannier rack back on, we can put the bolts in right now, but we're gonna be putting the rack on. This guy's got the Torotec tool case on his rack. I left it on there. He's got a lot of weight in there actually, so this is actually quite heavy. But we're literally gonna come in over, being very careful not to scratch the exhaust. I'm just bringing it in like so, and it sits nicely on top. And that's in place. So then we go back to the bolts that we've got on the side. So we've got four long ones, four medium ones, and two shorter ones. So taking two of the longer ones, we're going to come in to the front part here and the front one there. Now I'm not going to tighten these up, we're just going to make sure they are in. And then going for two of the medium sized ones. We're going in here. Okay, so they are not tightened up at all. Now taking the two small ones, we're coming in through here. Squeeze that into place. They're still not tightened up. And the same the other side. Now those bolts are all in place, I'm now going to literally drive them home. And just to make sure, we're going to go in with the torque wrench and just give it a little tweak so we know they're definitely nice and tight. Now we've got the grab rail. So with the Adventure model, you get these two bushes, stroke spacers, which you put in the back just here. But you don't get that with the GS, it's only the Adventure model. And then you pop that on top. Going back to the bolts, we've got two long ones and two medium ones left over. The long ones go in the front section. 
and the medium length ones go in the back. Now we can put the seat on. And something to test when the seat is on is to make sure the wires that are over here aren't getting in the way of the mechanisms for the seat cap catches. So if I do this, it still works. Yeah. So maybe actually that's something good to test before you put the seat on to make sure when you do this, that the seat mechanism is moving freely. There we go, and test it again, it comes off, yep. There we go, done. And the very last screw is a short shouldered T25. Okay, so that's how you put your, your GS Adventure back together again. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, whatever you want to do. All right, until the next time, stay safe behind those bars. I'm not on about these bars, I'm on about these bars. And I'll see you in the next video.